Hi, a very, very happy good evening. So this is Krishna when you were talking about the story of life on Earth and that's Bharati. So thank you so much for joining the new session. So the name of the new session is Let's Discuss Now. So what are we going to do here is we are going to discuss the sample papers of NCRT extract. Uh, so I have chosen five sample papers. So I'm going to discuss the questions with you. So PYQ is I believe out of fashion now. A lot of people have done PYQs. So the problem actually arises when you choose a paper that is different from all those that the teacher has solved, right? So in that context, I want to solve a new sample paper along with you to let you know where you guys face mistake. So it's not going to be a very very long session where you want to have it for three hours and four hours the paper discussion no so today i have chosen one sample paper so you know how the neat pattern is right so botany has 50 questions zoology has 50 questions so to together biology has 100 questions out of which you have to attempt 90 questions right so i have chosen one paper and i've divided into four sections 25 questions i will discuss in each section so we are starting with botany so today i will discuss the first 25 questions of botany so day after tomorrow i'll discuss the next 25 questions so meanwhile on the days of tuesday and thursday so i will be coming live for just 10 minutes to tell you something very new that is happening recently in the part or in the perspective of science because before you would have seen my short videos right so now instead of doing a recorded video so i'm going to li come live and tell you what i have to say so on the other hand parallelly we are going to learn something new right so on tuesdays and thursdays so here i am launching learn something know something new series all right so now let's solve 25 questions in botany and let's see if you are able to do it and where you have a problem stop me i will explain you or i'll tell you how to do it or how to go ahead all right yes so shall we go so here we go so let's discuss so what is this so i have i have chosen five ncrt extract sample papers which we'll be discussing so one paper i will do it in four slots so like that i would like to do five papers so let's see how far it goes so botany it's in 50 questions so i do two parts of botany so 25 questions of each right so in the first slot i do first 25 in the second half i do the second 25 so then zoology same 50 questions so first 25 and the next 25 right so are you ready for it so shall we solve some new questions something that's new something that you've solved but you have found it difficult yes so shall we go for it yes so here we are so i have the first question for you so let's see if you can solve so which family is included in the order polymoniales so this is a question from the chapter living world so the first chapter the first unit in your class 11 so that is where this question arises from so rat sony hello hi so thank you so much for joining my let's discuss now series so please don't forget to like share and subscribe so what will be the answer for this question rat sony so this question is from the top, from the chapter living world so all you have to remember in living world is kingdom phylum class order family genus and species so they have given you the order polymoniales so which family does it belong to so what are the family so which family belongs to the order polymoniales so what would be the answer so the order here is polymoniales So the family that comes under this order will be a convolvulice. Con, you can split and write vol, view, le, ca. All right. So the right answer here will be option A. Right. So is it tough? It was a first easy question, right? So we got a question two. So dioecious plants prevent self-pollination by. You should know what is dioecious plant. So di means two. So which means two plants are there to complete the reproductive cycle. So the male plant is separate. The female plant is separate. So dioecious plants of course has only cross pollination, right? The pollen grain from the male has to reach the stigma of the female flower. So this question is from the sexual reproduction in flowering plants.
right so how do dioecious plants prevent self pollination by preventing both autogamy so dioecious plants cannot undergo autogamy that is self pollination as well as gametogamy that is pollination between two flowers of the same plant so here the right answer is option c all right so here we go to question number 3 life cycle of fucus and volvex respectively are so this life cycle comes in the chapter plant kingdom so you have haplontic life cycle and diplontic life cycle so haplontic life cycle means the haploid phase is the dominant phase the plant body itself is haploid and haploid phase is the dominant phase so when i write diplontic phase so it means the diploid is the a uh, predominant phase right so fucus and volvex so volvex is a type of algae so it undergoes haplontic and fucus is diplontic all right so here the right answer is life cycle is diplontic and haplontic so you should understand this alteration of life cycle is an important topic which you should not skip from plant kingdom right So question four, an ex situ conservation occurs. In. So this mode of conservation comes in the chapter biodiversity and conservation. So ex situ conservation occurs in which of the following? So national parks and biosphere reserves are type of in situ conservation. So your botanical gardens and your zoological parks are type of ex situ. That is off site, out of site. In situ is you are protecting the particular animal or the plant in that particular site. Ex situ you are taking them out of the native site and protecting it. So here the right answer will be C and D. All right. So next question five. More than two leaves arise at a node and form a whorl. Identify the plant. So what is a node? If this is my stem, so this is my node, right? So this is another node. The distance between two nodes is my internode, right? so if more than two leaves arise at the node suppose if this is my node and here i have more than two leaves arising so this is in your alstonshire the type of phyllotaxy here is your world phyllotaxy so what is phyllotaxy so phyllo is leaf so taxi is arrangement so arrangement of leaves on the stem is your phyllotaxy all right so this comes from the chapter morphology of flowering plants done so first five questions are done so we have 25 questions so first five are done so 20 more questions left so question 6 public transport are switching from petrol or diesel to cng because so this comes from the last chapter in your class 12 that is environmental issues so cng is your compressed natural gas so why is that from petrol and diesel we are shifting to cng because it more it burns more efficiently it does not leave any unburnt hydrocarbons or carbon monoxide which in turn can cause a serious pollution issue all right so here the answer is option b so question 7 x are multicellular epidermal appendages okay what which helps in the prevention of water loss during transpiration what is x so this comes from the chapter that is anatomy of flowering plants right so when you talk about the epidermal tissue system so the epidermal tissue system has what is called as epidermal appendages So there are two types of epidermal appendages one is root hairs the other one is trichomes So root hairs help in the absorption of water from the soil and mind you root hairs are unicellular 
and trichomes are multicellular. So trichomes actually prevents the loss of water during transpiration. So the right answer would be your trichomes, whether it is D not B. Okay, it is trichome. So trichomes are multicellular epidermal appendages. So this comes in anatomy where we talk about the epidermal tissue system which includes your stomata, your guard cells, etc. Alright, okay, so question 8. Biomass available for consumption by heterotrophs can be represented as. It's okay, you're learning, that's fine. So even I make mistakes, that's completely fine. So biomass available for the consumption of heterotrophs. So heterotrophs here means cons consumers, right? So this comes from the chapter ecosystem. So this can be represented as gross primary productivity minus your respiratory losses. So you have what is called as net primary productivity. So this net primary productivity is gross primary productivity minus respiratory losses. So this is the amount that is available for consumers. So this is the total amount that is produced by photosynthesis. Right? Clear? Okay. So now coming to question 8. So centrioles are present in which? So this question is from the chapter cell the unit of life. So, so when we are talking about the stark difference between the animal and the plant cell. So plant cells have chloroplast whereas animals, plant cells have cell wall, animal cells have centrioles. So centrioles are non-membrane bound structures. Right? So these centrioles are structures like this which pull the spindle fibers apart. So it is seen in your animal cells. Yes, Veda, very good. So we go to the next question, question 10. Increase in population occurs due to natality, immigration, emigration, both A and B. So this question is from the chapter organism and population. So natality is nothing but your birth rate. So birth rate increases the population, immigration, someone is entering your population, okay. So this also increases your population, emigration, someone is exiting. So both A and B increases the population rate, yes, so this is both A and B. Bacterial cells do not have centriole. So bacterial cells have no organelle only, apart from nucleoid and some amount of ribosomes, they don't have any organelle, right. Alright, so we go to question 11. So, so soon we are done with 10 questions, the remaining 15 questions to go. So, what will be the DNA content of cells of G1 after the mitotic and meiosis 1 phase if the content after the S phase is 4C? So, after S phase, so this is from the chapter cell cycle and cell division, right? So, we have the G1 phase, S phase and the G2 phase. So, in the S phase, the DNA doubles, but what remains the same? The chromosome number remains the same, right? So, in G1 phase, how it will be? So, after S phase, it is 4C, right? But they want it in the G1 phase of mitosis and in the G1 phase of meiosis 1. So in, in G1 phase, it will be half of 4C, that is 2C. In meiosis 1, again it will be 2C. Because in meiosis, the mother cell divides to give two haploid daughter cells. So again, it will be 2C. So the right answer will be option D. So 2C in case of your G1 phase, right? So 2C in case of mitosis, so 2C in case of meiosis, right? So the right answer will be option D. So going forward to question 12, thiobacillus is responsible for the conversion of what? So thiobacillus, so this question comes from the chapter mineral nutrition. Right? 
so here you have a very important concept of nitrogen metabolism so that nitrogen metabolism is important so your nitrogen is getting converted into ammonia this process is nitrogen fixation right so from a dead plant or animal when the nitrogen is converted back into ammonia this process is ammonification right when sometimes this can be converted into no3 minus or sometimes it can be taken inside the atmosphere when this nitrate is converted back into nitrogen this process is denitrification so from oxides of nitrogen if you get nitrogen it is denitrification so that is done by a thiobacillus and pseudomonas all right so question 13 select the correct statement mesophyll cells have rubisco so this question comes from the chapter photosynthesis in higher in higher plants okay so in photosynthesis you have the c3 pathway and the c4 pathway the c3 happens in the mesophyll cells the c4 happens in the mesophyll as well as in the bundle sheet cells sorry the c3 happens in the yeah so mesophyll cells have rubisco bundle sheet cells have rubisco mesophyll cells lack pepcase bundle sheet cells have pepcase so they are talking with reference to the c4 cycle in the c4 cycle rubisco comes in the bundle sheet so bundle sheet cells have rubisco that is rubellose biscar bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenate is present in bundle sheet cells all right so question 14 Polyploidy is a result of what? So, poly is many, ploidy is set of chromosomes. So, when does an organism have polyploidy? Failure of cytokinesis after telophase. So, in karyokinesis, you have three phases. So, this comes from the chapter cell cycle okay so after karyokinesis you have cytokinesis so in karyokinesis what you have prophase metaphase anaphase and telophase right so in cytokinesis the cytoplasm divides only if karyokinesis happens so you have many nucleus inside a particular cytoplasm that is polyploidy condition all right so the right answer will be d so question 16 f0 f1 particle or the atps is located in so this comes in your chemi osmotic hypothesis so this comes from the chapter photosynthesis in higher plants so in the chemi osmotic hypothesis you have the f0 and f1 atps so this is the lumen of the thylakoid and this is the stroma so, where is the F1 and F0 present? In the thylakoid membrane. Alright. So, we go forward. Question number 16. So, question 15 is done in such a quick time. Were the questions tough? I don't think so. Right. So, 10 more questions will be done. So, conversion of glucose to glucose. Sorry. Conversion of glucose 6-phosphate to fructose 6-phosphate involves. So, this comes from respiration in plants. So, this is, they are talking about glycolysis, which is a common step in both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So, glucose gets converted into glucose 6-phosphate, that is the first step. Then, the glucose 6-phosphate gets converted into the fructose 6-phosphate, right? So, this is a type of isomerization reaction, all right? So, question 17. Monocarpic plants promotes flowering by exposure to monocarpic. Mono is one, carpic is one carpal. They promote flowering by exposure to low temperature. So, this is what is called as vernalization. So, this comes from the chapter Plant Growth and Development. Fine. So, question 18. 
growth of axillary bud is promoted and inhibited respectively by so if you remember auxin auxin promotes axillary buds cyto so that is your apical dormancy right so apical uh, budding that is apical domin dominance right so that is inhibited by cytokine so when the apical bud goes the lateral buds are suppressed so again this is from the chapter plant growth and development okay so question 19 capping at the 5 prime end of hn rna involves the addition of what so this question comes from the most important chapter that is molecular basis of inheritance okay so capping so after the process of transcription the rna that you get is the primary transcript or the immature rna so to prevent it from any damage it is quickly capped at the 5 prime position the cap is made up of methyl guanosine triphosphate so this is the cap all right so question 20 membrane of stromal lamella lacks which of the following so this question is again from photosynthesis so i believe out of the 20 questions that we solved at least four or five questions from were from the chapter photosynthesis so this is to say photosynthesis is very very important right so the membrane of stromal lamella lacks so in non cyclic photophosphorylation sorry in case of cyclic photophosphorylation so only your ps1 is involved because it is located in your stromal lamellae and it lacks your ps2 and your nadp reductase only atp is produced because both b and c right so question 21 sugar polymer present on the plasma membrane of rbc is not produced by so this is from the unit principles of inheritance and variation so this is the mendelian part right so sugar so they are asking you which is the recessive allele so A produces A sugar, B produces B sugar. I does not produce any sugar, so it is the I allele. The ABO blood grouping is coded for by one gene, that is gene I. Right? Clear? So we move forward. So question twenty two. So maize leads to resistance against maize stem. boros due to which of the following so this comes in your strategies for enhanced food development when you develop pest resistant varieties so this comes from the chapter strategies for enhancement in food production so maize leads to the resistance against maize stem borers due to low nitrogen and low sugar content so the answer is both option b and c so question number 23 in an expanding population so when do i say the population is expanding so this means the population is expanding right so in an expanding population the pre reproductive age should be more than the post reproductive age so this means to say these are young individuals and these are old individuals so they are post reproductive these are pre reproductive so in an expanding population the reproductive population should be high the young ones should be high so this is right The number of pre-reproductive individuals is very large. All right. So we go to the next question. So last but one question. So question number twenty-four. Which scientist proposes the lateral movement of protein within the bilayer occurs due to the quasi-fluid nature of lipid? So the quasi-fluid nature of lipid was given by Singer and Nicholson, and this comes from the chapter Cell: The Unit of Life. Right. Yes. So the last question for the evening. So you can't believe we are done with twenty-five questions so quickly, right? So can I? So let's move forward to the last question. So interaction between a cattle aggregate and a grazing catalyst. So this question comes from the chapter organism and population. 
okay so there's a bird that sits on the cattle so what kind of population interaction it is the interaction is commensalism where the cattle is neither benefited or harmed but the ergate is benefited because it can find its prey right so this is the type of interaction it is commensalism so the first 25 questions of this sample paper i have discussed today the remaining 25 i will discuss it day after tomorrow so meanwhile tomorrow i'm coming live for again 10 minutes to tell you something new so please join me for tomorrow's session at 4 50. so with this we are done with today's lecture so if you genuinely like me solving the questions along with you so please don't forget to like share and subscribe so thank you i will meet you tomorrow so until then this is me signing off take care and bye